You're excited. <laughs> I'm only up for one, well, a couple reasons. Number one, I had to use the can. And number two, uh, I had to take my pills. Uh, some, some of the pills are, so I don't have to get up and go to the can as often, but they don't work too good. But anyway, Captain Boomer coming to you guys. I hope you're having a good day so far. I know it's early. Uh, drive safe out there and um stuff like that and have a good day at your uh at your place of employment have a good day um a lot to kind of talk about today i had a lovely lovely time with my uh wife my son uh for my birthday dinner last night uh yes thank you oh thank you thank you thank you thank you the big six eight yeah, the big six eight. Um, anyway, so we did have a, a lovely dinner, I had a steak dinner, and stuff like that. Um, so uh, there you go. And anyway, today's program is if it's entitled Groundhog GIs. Um, first off, I'm not going to apologize, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of these some of these um, programs I do and stuff. Um, are, are pretty serious and this one is going to be a serious one I'm going to play not any rock and roll although I love rock and roll as most of us boomers do but I'm going to be playing a little background kind of funny music while I uh, tell you my story and some of this stuff is some of the stuff um, it, it, uh, it's like venting okay so because um, I, I think there's always a time in everybody's life when we really need to vent. And this show is about venting. And so if you don't want to turn it off right now, I mean, you guys turn me off anyway. What the hell? So, uh, uh, but if you want to listen, uh, I appreciate it. And I got a big shout out to uh, Millmont, Pennsylvania. They've been listening. And my beloved Stillwater, my cousin Susie, my brother Bruce. I didn't, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm... I, I, I'm mad. I'm just kind of hurt. I didn't get anybody to respond to the Agent Orange, where, where something orange and send something in. But uh, and that's a little bit what this program kind of is about. I'm going to talk about other things too as well, but mainly that, mainly that's what this program is kind of about. And uh, okay, well, I, okay, gang, here it is right here. I did find the epitome, the epitome of of priorities, and I'm not, and I want to say, I don't know if it started in this country, I guess it really doesn't matter, it might have started over in England, I don't know, anyway, it's called Groundhog Day, now February 2nd is coming up right around the corner, Groundhog Day, and we're going to be tuning in and, uh, and um, checking on... Uh, What's it called? Pawtexy? Politexy? Politician? I can't remember. Somewhere out there. Pawte uh, what is it? Rhode Island? Vermont? It's out there somewhere. Uh, 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 northeast up there of the country. Anyway, um, we do have a National Groundhog Day. Okay? If you see where I'm going with this. But you know what? And we, but we don't have a national Agent Orange Awareness Day, of which I'm trying to push. Uh, and we'll just keep, keep pushing. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> you kind of see where I'm going with this. 
But we, we find it in our infinite wisdom in this beautiful country of ours. And don't get me wrong, it is a great country, but a lot of times, boy, our, our priority, priorities are just totally fucked up. And they really are. Here's a perfect example. Why is it that we could take the time, the money, the effort, and everything to glorify a fucking rodent of the rodent family? You know, groundhog is probably the rodent family. Uh, and have a National Groundhog Day, and then uh, he's going to tell us whether or not uh, we got the, uh, we can pack up our uh, winter clothes or, or get out our bikinis and our fucking uh, shorts and sandals and uh, all drink martinis and shit or whatever the hell it is with the umbrellas in it in the drink and uh, all this in the Jimmy Buffet music, uh, whatever. Anyway, um, yeah. But the thing of the deal is, you know, when I was over in Vietnam and different things and any other war you want to look at, I have, I don't recall seeing a goddamn groundhog shooting a gun in any war. I, I, I might be mistaken, but, uh, I mean, if there were, they were really undercover. Because they're not that big. So maybe there was a few, maybe there was some in wars, you know, fighting uh, alongside us, GIs. Um, but all I'm saying is I don't recall see it any um but anyway but we take it upon ourselves to uh glorify these uh now don't get me wrong it, it's cute and it's novel and it's fun and everything but the but the bottom line is this that groundhog gets more recognition than an american soldier who served in the worst war ever and he doesn't get it and we don't get our day in court and we don't get a national day that is my point that's what makes me puke. That's what makes me sick. Okay, there we go. So, I think we ought to, uh, having said that, I think that we ought to have a committee just, uh, you know, let's get a hold of all these groundhogs and give them little guns and send them into the next uh, conflict or whatever we have. Let's, let's, let's see how they do, okay? <laughs> But maybe that's just me. Well, we're going to go on play. I'm going to play a little bit of background music for you. And I'm not going to apologize, but this is what this... If you want to listen, continue listening. If you don't, shut me off. You know, I, I can't control what... Ah, uh, thank you, honeymooners. Thank you, honeymooners. I can't control what people might want to listen to and what they don't want to listen to. Hell, if I, you know, if I did... Uh, if I could, I'd be a radio god. I'd put KQ out of business and all the rest of them if I actually knew what people really wanted to hear on a podcast or a radio show, for that matter. But nobody can, and I sure as hell can't. Um, <laughs> but anyways, God bless us boomers out there, huh, guys? Yes, we are. And, you, and you know, uh, us boomers, a lot of people don't realize it. Um, well, we take care of three generations. Meaning this, that we do, um, we let our kids live with us in most cases. No other generation has done this so far. And I don't know if it's because we're stupid, gullible, or lazy ourselves, but we have our kids living with us. We've got our grandkids living with us. All under wooden roof, you got this generational thing. And, and don't get me wrong, it's not. I'm not saying it's wrong by no means. I'm just saying it's something that's happening. and. And the boomers, we are, once again, the only generation that's done this. Uh, oh, yeah, there might have been. Do you think for one minute my mom and dad watched any of our kids? No. Uh-uh. Didn't even ask. It wasn't even, it wasn't even thought of. You took care of your own kids. Not so much these days. I'm telling you. I don't know. But that's just me. Like I said, if I knew what you wanted to hear, uh, I'd be a god. Radio god. That's me. Captain Boomer the Radio God, or Podcast God. Um, there you go, got a little Lord and Hardy going, huh? That'll brighten up your day, guys. And Axel says, yeah, you guys, now have a good day out there and be safe. Yeah. And don't forget, guys, Villages of Viagra, we're even. Oh, hell, I don't have any of my stuff. I guess I'm kind of ready. Villages of Viagra, guys. Okay, we're even a hard day. Is a good day. All right, thank you. Although this is a kind of a serious show, the bottom line is still that uh, it's like a venting show. 
And I think a lot of people nowadays, we, we should be doing a lot of venting. Hell, this little show of mine keeps me out of the bars. I'll tell you that much, keeps me off drugs. Of course, the one that's going to get legalized here pretty soon. I'm planning on being a heavy user. Um, stuff like that. I'm going to be up every day. I don't care. Anyways, uh, oh, there you go. I love Andy and Mayberry. I heard they grew a lot of weed down there. Yeah. Yep, Andy. Yep, Andy, uh, Andy, uh, Andy and Goober and Barney, they all smoked. They smoked a little doobie. Yeah, they did. Um, not Goober, though. He had to work on cars. Uh, maybe that's what took so long to get the cars fixed. Huh. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got to love it. Okay, where are we going with this? Oh, yeah. I was. Yeah, okay. Uh, a fucking Groundhog Day. Yeah, but no Asian Orange Day. Okay, I already said that. Yep. So, um... You could take it for what it's for what it's worth, right? Okay, here. Uh, just remember, guys, you could tune a piano, but you can't. But you, uh, what the heck? What the hell did it? Where did it go now? Here we go. Okay, guys, remember now. You can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. That's what I wanted to say. Oh, a little bit more of a little rascal and Laurel and Hardy here. And stuff like that. I gotta make sure the microphone's on. I don't know why. Does it really matter? I mean, I could. The response I'm gonna get from this show, it doesn't really doesn't matter. But anyway, I keep plugging away, and that's what that's all any of us can do, right? We just plug away at, at whatever we do. Oh, that. Ooh, why? Oh, that was from a. Oh, that was from a, an earlier program that also shouldn't have been put on the air. Uh. Oh yeah, that's my Harry German wife song I'm gonna have out there. Harry German wife song. You gotta, you gotta love them ones. What is the rest of my cheat sheets here? No, I get, I, I get a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails and stuff, and says, Captain Boomer, has, have you went to uh, any type of um, schooling for, for your, for your um, shows and, and podcasts? And I says, well, no, I didn't go to the Brown Institute for a degree in this. I, no, but I. But I have been institutionalized. Does that count? Uh, because that's it's called the Brown Institute. So I thought maybe that would uh, qualify me for for doing this stuff. Well, hello, Gilligan. How are you? Yeah. Yeah, chasing the hot babes around on the island. Yeah. Wouldn't you all just like to go have a really like a Gilligan's Island somewhere? I would. Chase broad and stuff. Now, they could grow some weed on that island easily. I mean, hell. Nobody can find them. I think maybe that one guy, wrong way, uh, wrong way Feldman or wrong way something, that guy flew the plane, you know, and keeps crashing on the island. But he always gets away. He always gets off the island. I can never figure it out. Anybody who ever ends up on that island always manages to get off real easy, but not those seven ding-dongs. I, I don't get it. Anyway, um, wrong way Feldman, I think his name was, because he flew the wrong way all the whatever. But he, I think he could bring, he could do the, uh, he could be distributing. They grow it and, and he, he lands on the island and he distributes it. That's it. I think that's how that works with Gilligan's Island and the, and the, and the drug cartel of the uh, Gilligan Island people. You heard it here first only on Captain Boomer shows. Captain Boomer, uh, I only put out what people really want to hear, I think. Anyway, okay, I got more stuff here. I got, oh, I'm just... Oh, I'll turn this one up and I'll shut up for a minute. This, I love this song. <laughs> it's, it was on one of the Laurel and Hardy movies. Where she calls her name, and I call 